Welcome to the Canadian edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. Andrew, I just want to say thank you so much. You were such a blessing to me. You made it simple. I think I really needed to see that. You have showed me and taught me His love. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is the end of my series that I've been doing for five weeks on a better way to pray. I tell you, this is powerful. I know that there's many of you that watch the program every single day and you think, well, I've heard this whole program, I mean, this whole teaching, and so I don't need this. But this is something that you need so that you can go back over it because this is not the kind of thing that you just get it one time and you've got it. You need to study this. Plus, it's a great way to share this truth with somebody else. It's one thing for you to tell somebody about that the Lord has shown you something, but then if you have something that's in print like this to give them, it could just really help. So I encourage you to please get the material. Remember, it's our last day, and I've got this little freebie that I wrote a couple of months ago. I just sat down and thought that not everybody will read this entire book. This teaching is in this book, but not everybody will read the whole book. This is just like, a, I don't know, a 40-page book or something like that that is easy for you to grasp the concept, and this is a free gift to you. Today is our last day to offer any of these materials. So I've been talking about that when you pray, you have to believe that you receive when you pray. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. How can you believe if you can't see, taste, hear, smell, or feel, or have some physical proof that what you prayed for has happened? The way you do that is to recognize that there is a spiritual world. John 4, 24 says, God is a spirit, and when God answers your prayer, He moves in the spiritual realm. He commands an answer at that exact moment that you pray, but there is a process from when God moves to when you see it in the physical realm. And to illustrate this, I've been using Daniel in Daniel chapter 9, Daniel prayed a prayer, and it was three minutes into his prayer. While he was still praying, the angel Gabriel showed up and answered his prayer and told him in the uh, 23rd verse, at the beginning of your supplications, the commandment came forth. God commanded Gabriel to go answer Daniel's prayer while he was still praying at the very beginning of his prayer. But it took about three minutes from when God gave the command unt until it manifested. In the 10th chapter, the same man, Daniel, was praying, and I'm sure, if anything, he was stronger in his faith, and yet in the 10th chapter, it took three weeks, not three minutes, but three weeks before he saw a messenger come and answer his prayer. But when this messenger showed up, the messenger told him, he says in verse 12, Daniel 10, 12, for from the first day that you did set your heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. So God wasn't the variable. God answered both prayers instantly, but there was different results. Not because God was different, but because there was a demonic hindrance. And it wasn't because Daniel was different. You know, there's, there's options here. God is never the variable. If you ask for something, you receive, is what Jesus said in Matthew 7, 7. So if you ask, you receive. God always answers every prayer that is prayed in faith based on a promise in His Word. There is never a variable. God is faithful. He never misses it. So God never ceases or fails to answer a prayer. But we can get into unbelief if we don't understand that there's a process and that it may take a period of time between when we say amen and there it is. So if we don't understand that, we can get into unbelief. And the scripture says, in due season, you will reap if you faint not. But if you faint, if you get discouraged because you don't see it, you can stop what God has started. It could be in the pipeline. It could be in process. And you shut off the flow because you got into unbelief because you didn't see anything. So that's one variable. You could be a variable. And then another variable here in Daniel chapter 10 was that there was a demonic power that was fighting against it. So it wasn't God who was different. It wasn't Daniel who wasn't believing. There was a third option, and that is that there can be demonic opposition. 
And at the close of my program yesterday, I was making this point that Daniel, as an Old Testament man, did not have the same authority that we have as a New Testament believer. We now have authority that has been given unto us that Daniel didn't have. So all Daniel could do was just hold on to his faith that God is faithful and he refused to waver. He didn't back up. He kept praying until he saw a manifestation. And that's good. But we can even do something better than that. We not only can believe that God has answered and refuse to give up and just keep standing even when things don't look right, but as New Testament believers, we can take our authority and we can begin to start rebuking and binding the devil. I gave a story yesterday about a man who put a for sale sign up and it took two years for the house to sell, to sell but uh, he finally realized God had answered his prayer, but God spoke to some person and Satan was hindering him through another person. So what he did was get into prayer. He started interceding and doing spiritual warfare. And in two days time, he had had that house on the market for two years, but in two days time, that house sold. And when the man came and bought it, he said, for two years, the very first day you put that sign in the yard, God told me that was my house. And, but it took two years for him to get his finances together. There was a demonic hindrance, and it was only when my friend began to pray and intercede that he made it happen. So here's the application for us. From all of these things we're saying, you've got to believe that you receive when you pray. But that doesn't mean that you're automatically going to see the physical results because there is a process. There is time. There's space. There's things involved from when God gives the command and when something happens in the physical. So you have to evaluate yourself. Are you wavering in your faith? Over in James chapter 1, it says that if you lack wisdom, then ask of God who gives to all men liberally and upbraids not and it shall be given unto him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering because if you waver, you're like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So those verses are saying that you have to remain steadfast. So you believe that you receive when you pray. You believe that God always, always, always answers every, th every prayer that you pray that's according to His will. You know He's done it. But then if you aren't seeing the manifestation, you go and evaluate. Am I wavering? Am I strong in faith? And if you have any reservations, if you aren't sure, well, then you need to shut off some stuff. You need to get focused on God. You need to get into the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I would encourage you to take things like this little booklet, man, a little 40-page booklet, and just go back and review it and look at this. And what it'll do, it'll help refocus and, and assure you that, yes, God has answered your prayer and it's in the pipeline. And so you go back and you build up your faith and you make sure that you're standing in faith. But if you do that and you know you're standing in faith, you're standing in the same faith that has worked before and you know it should be working now, well, then another option is that there could just be a demonic opposition. You know, I've mentioned this earlier, but we are... We're trying to get our Karis Bible College built out, and I've got a huge vision. And yet we are having hindrances from the city government that are unreasonable. And I'm not saying this just from my perspective. We've actually brought in outside people. We've got a man who's our builder, and this man was uh, the head lead construction guy over the Pittsburgh Sports Complex. I'm not sure the name of it. I'm not sure if it was multiple or just one of them. Same thing in Jacksonville, Florida. He was the guy that constructed that. And he was in the process of building a $1.8 billion sphere in uh, Las Vegas. It's a globe. And I mean, $1.8 billion. He has done major, major, major projects and he left all of that, came here, felt like God wanted him to help me build. And he has said that he has been doing this for, I don't even know, but decades. He's done these major projects and he has never seen this kind of incompetence. He's never seen this kind of uh, resistance, the nitpicking things that people are doing. 
So anyway, I, I just quote that to say that this is not just a prejudiced opinion that, you know, I'm not getting what I want, and so I'm looking at it and amplifying, ma magnifying it out of, uh, you know, perspective. No, it's, it's unreasonable. I don't understand all the reasons. I don't know why the people are doing it, but I know that it's inspired by the devil. There is no physical reason for us to have this resistance. And so, you know, I've been patient. I've tried to be a good neighbor. We have not forced things, but man, I'm just to a place right now that I've taken all I'm going to take. And unlike Daniel, when I know that God is answering my prayer and yet I haven't seen it come to pass, I've have examined my heart. It's not me that's not trusting God. I have been seeking God and I just have an assurance that it's not me that's the problem. I know it's not God that's the problem. I know it's the devil. Now, he's using people and we're dealing with things and we're doing the things that we have to do. Uh, we're actually in the process contemplating uh, putting forth a uh, lawsuit and different things. I don't know exactly all the things in the natural, but I know in the spiritual that ultimately this is just the devil that hates to see what's happening at Karis. Did you know we had a thousand, over a thousand people make application to come to our Karis Bible College in the 22 23 school year that didn't show up. And so we called them and asked, since they applied, why didn't they show up? And 550 of that number said that they didn't come because they didn't have housing. Woodland Park, Colorado is a community of about 7,500 people or so. It's not a big community. And we've got right at 1,100 students that are here. And we had another 1,000 that wanted to come and there's just not housing. So that's why it is so imperative that we build student housing and we've got the plans done. We are ready to build. We've actually cleared the land. We've done the landscaping. We've got the forms up with the rebar in there. We are ready to pour concrete and the city has just delayed us for over six months. And they're fighting against us unreasonable. They tell us every time that we go and meet with them, well, uh, give us another week or two weeks. And that's been going on for six months. So anyway, my point is, this is just the devil. And I've had all of it I can take. So I'm standing against it. I would ask those of you who are watching and that you receive from this ministry to stand with us and in agreement. You know, you don't have to physically be here to do this spiritual warfare and deal with this thing. But we are just standing against this and, and praise God by the time you see this program, we make these programs about two or three months in advance, I believe we will have our permits and we will be building. The only, the only thing that might change that is that in the past we have incrementally dealt with things and they, they give us a freedom to go this far, but then the next step they're just fighting us and we are in the process right now of trying to decide whether we keep just dealing with this thing inch by inch piecemeal or whether we just go full bore and come against them with a major lawsuit so that in the future we won't have to fight every single battle every time. So if we do that, it might uh, be a more complicated process. But anyway, all that to say that I have authority that Daniel didn't have. And I'm beginning to exercise it. And we're going to see this thing come to pass. We've already won. The city just doesn't realize it. <laughs> Amen. The devil doesn't realize it, but he's already defeated. I will not give up and we will get it done. And you can apply this on a personal level, that if you're praying for a healing, you need to believe that when you pray and you received your healing, you believe you received the moment you prayed, but it may take a period of time to manifest. Now, let me say some things here that if you are struggling to believe that anything is going on that you can't see or perceive through your five senses, then it might be faith or a, a greater step of faith to just pray and believe and then forget it. That might be greater faith than to pray and look at your problem and immediately get into unbelief. Let me give an example that, let's say, you know, I gave an example, I think, uh, last week about I had a ganglion cyst on my wrist that just kept growing and I had an expandable watch band that I covered it up for a while, but it finally got so big that you could see that my watch band was bulging out. And I believed that God had healed me. I was saying that, 
but I just hadn't really fought over it. I was just standing on my faith and I knew that eventually it would come to pass. But one night I finally just decided that my me ignoring it, that wasn't the best way. Now let me say that if you are young in faith, it might be good to just pray over something like a cyst on your arm and then stick the thing behind your back and refuse to look at it and just refuse to look at anything that would contradict your faith. That might be a greater step of faith than praying and then looking at it and say, well, nothing has happened. But I think the greatest faith is when you can pray and know that God has answered and then you can look at your problem right in the face and if you don't see it manifest, instead of ignoring it, turn on it and command, take your authority and begin to start speaking to that thing. Again, I've already dealt with this, but in Mark chapter 11, verse 23, Jesus said, Whosoever will say unto this mountain, not say to God about your mountain, but speak to your mountain. And so you take your authority and words are powerful. Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And so you use your words and you start speaking to things. I did that with that ganglion cyst. And so one night I just spent about two or three hours praying in tongues and then I would stop and speak in English and command that cyst to be gone. And I knew that God had already done it. And if I wasn't seeing manifestation, it wasn't God who had hindered it. It was either me wavering and I refused. I wasn't, I wasn't going to put up with it anymore or it was the devil hindering it. So I just got into about two hours worth of prayer. I didn't see any visible results. I didn't feel any visible results that night. But when I woke up in the morning, it was totally gone. And I believe it would have stayed another month or two or whatever if I hadn't have fought with it. Let me give you a scriptural example where Jesus did this. This is over in Mark in chapter 8. Jesus took a man by the hand and led him out of town. In Mark chapter 8 and in verse 22, it says, And he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up, and he was restored and saw every man clearly. And he sent him away to his house, saying, Neither go into the town nor tell it to any in the town. This is an unusual experience. It's the only time that I'm aware of in Scripture that Jesus ever asked a person after he prayed for them to be healed how they felt and if they had seen the healing manifest. So this is unique. And it's the only time in Scripture that Jesus ever prayed for a person twice. Now, some people might interpret that as, well, he didn't, he didn't really believe that he got it the first time. Of course, we know that's not true with Jesus. Jesus never operated in unbelief and never did anything wrong. He was God manifest in the flesh, and he did things perfectly. So he didn't pray for this guy a second time because he didn't believe that God had released his power the first time, and so he prayed again. No, that's not what it was. He took this man by the hand and led him out of the town. You know, Jesus was busy. I mean, he, he was so busy that there's instances in Scripture where they couldn't even eat. They went over on the other side of the lake trying to escape the multitude, and they ran around. He, he just... He had so many demands on him that I guarantee you he did not just take this man by the hand and lead him out into the country because he just wanted to get away uh, and enjoy some quiet time. He was busy. He, for him to do this, there was a reason. And I believe that the reason is because in Luke chapter 10, it talks about Bethsaida and Chorazin. And it says, Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! Woe unto thee, Chorazin! For if the mighty works that had been done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long time ago in sackcloth and ashes. And so he said that this area right here was probably full of more unbelief, more resistance against his ministry than any place he had ever ministered. So what this says is that this place was full of unbelief. In the sixth chapter of the book of Mark, Jesus wasn't able to do many mighty works, not because of any lack in him, but because of the unbelief of the people. The surroundings can affect the way the power of God flows. It's not just a matter between the person who's doing the praying and the person who's receiving. The atmosphere around you can affect how the power of God flows. So Jesus took this man by the hand 
TO GET HIM OUT OF THE TOWN, AWAY FROM THAT UNBELIEF. BUT EVEN THOUGH HE GOT THE MAN OUT OF THE TOWN, HE HADN'T GOT ALL OF THE TOWN OUT OF THE MAN. HE KNEW THAT THIS MAN WAS STILL STRUGGLING WITH UNBELIEF. AND SO WHEN HE PRAYED, HE KNEW THAT THE POWER OF GOD HIT HIM, BUT HE ALSO KNEW THAT THIS MAN'S UNBELIEF, HIS WAVERING, THIS uh, RESISTANCE THAT WAS IN THAT WHOLE TOWN WAS STILL IN HIM, AND HE KNEW THAT IT COULD HINDER WHAT GOD HAD ALREADY DONE IN THE SPIRIT FROM BEING COMPLETE IN THE PHYSICAL REALM. SO RATHER THAN JESUS JUST PRAYING FOR HIM AND LETTING IT GO. NOW, IF THIS MAN HAD NOT WAVERED, IF HE HAD STAYED IN FAITH, THEN THAT HEALING HAD ALREADY PARTIALLY MANIFESTED. IT SAID HE SAW MEN AS TREES WALKING. AND SO IT WAS ALREADY HAVING AN EFFECT, BUT IT WASN'T COMPLETE YET. AND IF JESUS HAD JUST LET HIM GO, AND IF THIS MAN HAD CONTINUED TO STAND IN FAITH, HE EVENTUALLY WOULD HAVE BEEN PERFECTLY WHOLE. BUT IT WAS ALSO VERY POSSIBLE THAT HE HAD GONE BACK INTO THAT UNBELIEF SITUATION AND PEOPLE WOULD HAVE CRITICIZED HIM AND SAID, WELL, YOU AREN'T REALLY HEALED, AND HE WOULDN'T HAVE EVER SEEN THE HEALING MANIFEST OR HE MIGHT HAVE LOST WHAT HE HAD. SO RATHER THAN JESUS JUST IGNORING IT, HE LOOKED AT IT HEAD ON, DEALT WITH IT, AND IF THAT UNBELIEF COULD STAND ONE DOSE OF THE HOLY GHOST, IT WOULD NEVER WITHSTAND TWO. SO HE LAID HANDS ON HIM A SECOND TIME, NOT BECAUSE HE DIDN'T BELIEVE HE HAD RECEIVED, BUT HE WAS JUST STANDING AGAINST THAT DEMONIC OPPOSITION, THAT UNBELIEF, and, AND RELEASING THAT POWER AGAIN UNTIL THE HEALING WAS PERFECT. AND SURE ENOUGH, THE SECOND TIME THIS MAN SAW EVERY MAN CLEARLY, AND THEN JESUS SAID UNTO HIM, HE SAYS, DON'T GO BACK INTO THE TOWN OR TELL IT TO ANY IN THE TOWN. DID YOU KNOW IT'S POSSIBLE THAT THIS MAN LIVED IN THE TOWN? HE WAS A BLIND MAN. HE WAS A BEGGAR. AND PROBABLY HE DIDN'T LIVE BY HIMSELF OUT IN THE COUNTRY SOMEPLACE. HE WAS PROBABLY IN THE CITY. HE WAS DEPENDING UPON OTHER PEOPLE. AND YET JESUS TOLD HIM, BASICALLY, DON'T GO BACK TO YOUR HOUSE. DON'T GO INTO THE TOWN AND DON'T TELL ANYBODY WHAT HAD HAPPENED. WHY WOULD HE SAY SOMETHING LIKE THAT? BECAUSE THAT SAME UNBELIEF THAT CAUSED THE HEALING NOT TO BE PERFECTLY MANIFEST, THAT SAME UNBELIEF WOULD HAVE TAKEN THAT HEALING AWAY FROM HIM. IT WOULD HAVE PUT HIM BACK INTO THIS. JESUS TOLD HIM SOMETHING RADICAL. DON'T GO BACK TO YOUR HOUSE. DON'T GO INTO THE TOWN. DON'T TELL IT TO ANYBODY IN THE TOWN. SO SEE, JESUS DIDN'T IGNORE. IT'S MORE FAITH. IF YOU HAVE A WARD OR SOMETHING ON YOUR HAND, IT WOULD BE MORE FAITH TO PRAY AND THEN JUST STRAP THAT HAND BEHIND YOU OR PUT A GLOVE ON IT SO THAT YOU WOULDN'T EVEN SEE ANYTHING AND YOUR SENSES WOULDN'T BE TELLING YOU IT DIDN'T WORK. THAT'S MORE FAITH THAN LOOKING AT IT AND GETTING IN UNBELIEF. BUT THE GREATEST FAITH WOULD BE TO PRAY, KNOW BEYOND ANY SHADOW OF A DOUBT THAT GOD HAS ANSWERED YOUR PRAYER AND LOOK AT THAT THING AND REBUKE IT AND PRAY IN TONGUES AND DEAL WITH IT UNTIL YOU SEE THE PHYSICAL MANIFESTATION. NOT DOUBTING THAT GOD HAS MOVED, BUT JUST SAYING THAT SATAN, I'M NOT ALLOWING YOU TO HINDER THIS. I'M NOT ALLOWING MY UNBELIEF TO STOP IT. YOU DEAL WITH THOSE THINGS. YOU TAKE YOUR AUTHORITY AND YOU SHORTEN THE PERIOD OF TIME IN BETWEEN WHEN YOU SAY AMEN AND THERE IT IS. YOU DON'T HAVE TO JUST LET IT RUN ITS COURSE. MAN, I'M OUT OF TIME TODAY AND THIS IS SOME POWERFUL STUFF. I'VE GOT THIS BOOK ENTITLED A BETTER WAY TO PRAY. AND THEN I'VE GOT THIS LITTLE BOOKLET ENTITLED WHAT TO DO WHEN YOUR PRAYERS SEEM UNANSWERED. THIS IS SOMETHING I WROTE IN JUST A DAY OR TWO'S TIME. IT'S ABOUT A 40-PAGE LITTLE BOOKLET THAT COVERS WHAT I'VE TALKED ABOUT THIS WEEK. WE HAVE uh, ENGLISH AND SPANISH BOOKS, CD'S, DVD'S, USB'S, AND STUDY GUIDES. REMEMBER, TODAY'S OUR LAST DAY TO OFFER IT, SO LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AND THEN PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY. YOU KNOW, I'VE BEEN MINISTERING ON TELEVISION NOW FOR 23 YEARS, AND WE HAVE THE POTENTIAL OF OVER 5 BILLION PEOPLE PER DAY THAT CAN WATCH THIS PROGRAM. OF COURSE, NOT ALL OF THOSE PEOPLE WATCH, BUT IF YOU FIGURED THAT JUST A SMALL FRACTION OF THOSE WATCH, WE STILL HAVE MILLIONS OF PEOPLE THAT WATCH THIS PROGRAM. I'M NOT SURE THAT EVERYBODY AGREES WITH IT, BUT there, I KNOW THAT THERE ARE MANY OF YOU THAT HAVE WATCHED THIS PROGRAM THAT GOD HAS USED MY MINISTRY TO TOUCH YOU AND TO BLESS YOU AND I'M JUST GOING TO ASK YOU STRAIGHT OUT IF YOU WOULD CONSIDER BECOMING A PARTNER WITH US. THE SCRIPTURE SAYS THAT IF SOMEBODY SOWS SPIRITUAL THINGS TO YOU, THAT IT'S APPROPRIATE FOR YOU TO SOW BACK FINANCIAL, PHYSICAL THINGS. AND WE ARE IN THE PROCESS OF EXPANDING OUR Caris BIBLE COLLEGE. WE NOW HAVE OVER 1,100 STUDENTS, BUT WE HAD OVER 500 STUDENTS REGISTER THIS LAST YEAR WHO DIDN'T SHOW UP WHEN WE CONTACTED THEM. THEY SAID THEY DIDN'T HAVE STUDENT HOUSING. 
And so we are in the process of building student housing for a thousand students. We're also going to accommodate them with a student activity center where they can have a thousand seat cafeteria, new classrooms and things like this. We're going to have a athletic center. We're going to turn this campus into something that will be just as good as any secular campus that people have. They shouldn't have to give up things to come and sit under the Word of God and learn about God. And it's going to cost a lot of money. So if you've been blessed by this ministry and you have never participated with us, I'd encourage you to go to our website. We've got information on the screen and just become a partner with us. We have a partnership that we call Foundation Builders that is helping us build not only physical foundation for these buildings, but build foundations in people's lives that will go out from here and literally change the world. So check it out and become a partner with us today. Andrew is offering his booklet, What to Do When Your Prayers Seem Unanswered, as his free gift to you today. This offer is limited to one free booklet per household and is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. Andrew's complete series, A Better Way to Pray, is available in a book and study guide in either English or Spanish. Or you can get this teaching in a newly updated CD or DVD album and as a USB made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these valuable resources is available when you contact us. Andrew is also offering this teaching as an audiobook on CD or it can be purchased through audible.com. Go to our website at awmc.ca and click on today's TV offer under the store tab to see all the ways you can get these products. Or you can call the Andrew Womack Ministries Canada helpline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time at 647-348-2220 to order. I'd like to let all of you, our Canadian viewers, know that we have a Bible college in Toronto. And we would love to have you come and be a part of it. There's multiple ways you can take advantage, not only through the campus there in Toronto, but we have online courses, we have correspondence courses, uh, just a number of ways. But we want to help you, and we're making it as available to you as we possibly can. So check it out with the information's on your screen, our Carius Bible College, Toronto. If Andrew's teachings are making a difference in your life, consider becoming a Grace Partner with Andrew Womack Ministries Canada today. Go to awmc.ca or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time at 647-348-2220. Also, to learn more about the vision and mission of Andrew Womack Ministries Canada, be sure to visit our website at awmc.ca. While there, you'll also find details about all of the products available and be able to access many of Andrew's teachings absolutely free. Remember, that's awmc.ca. Thank you for your support, and we look forward to hearing from you today.